Hello friends, this is Sarah Liz and welcome back to another crafty adventure. This card started out as a craft roulette card. The project was a slimline card, so this is a mini slim. My colors were purple and orange and I used turquoise as my plus one. The element is a sack and the random is sequins or gems. But of course, you know me, I wanted to add an interactive element to this card, so that's what I wanted to show you here. I've used a bunch of different products, anything that's still available, I'll link below. But the star of the show is really the Spellbinders Let's Be Frank die set. I've gotten a ton of mileage out of this one this fall, and it's super cute. There's a Frankenstein, and then there's this hat with the witch's feet. Um, the one element of craft roulette that maybe isn't clear is how I used the sack. That background is a recycled grocery sack. I laid it on some packing tape. And then I used alcohol inks to color it and I rubbed a little bit of slippery when wet lunar paste over a few areas to create that gold accent on the raised portions. I created a card base that is an eighth of an inch bigger all the way around. I believe it's six and an eighth by three and three eighths. Um, and I'm kind of placing where I want the feet to go, just planning things out. Um, and the inside of that card base has that hat again on another one of those scalloped borders. I've cut a ton of panels that are the same size as my card base. And I'm gonna take two of them and use just a standard hole punch to punch through them to create a spot for the magnets so I know that they will line up. That's how we're gonna keep the feet from popping out when the card is closed. These magnets are from Total Element and they're super thin. So it's about the same as a piece of heavyweight cardstock. Um, I tore this card apart many times before I got it to work the way I wanted to. So here you're going to see me add one magnet and one piece of cardstock with a hole in it. Later on, I'm going to tear it apart and I'm going to double up the magnet and the cardstock on the front of the card. I'm using the Nubo Deluxe Adhesive over the magnet. I find that Barely Art, while I love it, isn't great on a non-porous surface, but if I'm honest, <laughs> after tearing the card apart, um, I don't know that it mattered. More importantly, I'm getting glue all the way around the magnet so it can't come out, right? All that paper is secured really tightly. So here's the back panel, again, cut to that sixth and an eighth by three and three eighths, and here's that other piece we popped a hole in. Uh, I'm gonna adhere that to the back panel when I remake it later, I end up doubling up that panel and doubling up the magnet. I just stacked them one on top of the other and it, it created enough extra strength in the magnet connection that it works out pretty well. So I'm double checking my magnet, making sure I have the right pieces of the magnet attracting each other instead of uh, pushing each other away. And then I will sandwich that magnet in there using another piece of heavyweight black cardstock. I want the legs to pop out and look like they're kind of hanging from the hat. So ahead of time, I kind of lined up where I wanted that and I made myself a little dot. Um, these legs on the die, they cut out just to the top of the stockings. So I also cut an extra piece of cardstock to sandwich in there to create that sort of swinging mechanism uh, and I, again, just used my regular old hole punch to uh, make that hole big enough. My original thought was to use layers of cardstock to build this up. I don't like it when my interactive cards are super bulky. And it was slim and tight and it was awesome, but the legs didn't fall as cleanly as I wanted to. The toes on the witch kind of curl and create... Um, just a, enough of a rub against that cardstock that it wasn't swinging the way I wanted it to. So I'm rebuilding it. This time um, I'm using, these are replenishments from my favorite things. They're pretty awesome if they're still available and very affordable, I'll check. Um, but you could use a button. You could probably use like a foam dot, anything that's round. I like these because they're super slick. So you get a really nice swinging mechanism. And then this is some black foam tape 
there's nothing like creating a Halloween card with a bunch of white foam tape around the outside. So this is this worked out really nicely. I'm going to end up doubling that up. I'm just placing it. This is actually the card base. The front of the card is facing my desk right now. And you can kind of see where I tore the old cardstock out. But originally, this is what I did. I just stuck those feet in there and kind of lined the foam tape up around it. I want to make sure there's plenty of room so that you don't see the toes popping out um, when the card is closed. And then I am lining up. That's the back panel that has the magnet in it. I got real brave here. I probably should have put this in my Misty, but it worked out okay. Uh, everything was pretty neat and tidy. And I am just going to let that dry to make sure um, that little plastic piece works out okay. It is fairly thick in the back. But that's what I needed for those legs to move freely. If I had done something larger, like a pumpkin um, or something pretty sturdy, I probably could have gotten away with one layer of foam tape or even the cardstock layers I started with. But this is our finished card project to for today. I hope you like it. Uh, I hope you try something like this um, to create a little surprise in one of your cards. If you liked this project, give it a thumbs up. Uh, maybe consider subscribing. I would love to have you. Uh, I've got lots more planned for the next month or so. Um, and I will see you next time.